Olá a todos, nós estamos no oitavo International Media Plant Meeting, realizado aqui na Exalc, o campus de Piracicaba da Universidade de São Paulo. O tema dessa edição é IA, Inteligência Artificial, na Revolução Científica, Aplicações e Inovações. Diversos profissionais da área estão aqui hoje para se atualizar dessas modernas ferramentas que vêm sendo cada vez mais utilizadas e aplicadas em projetos de genética e melhoramento de plantas. Para conhecer mais sobre esse tema, e a experiência de quem está no dia a dia trabalhando com isso? Confira agora uma entrevista realizada com um dos palestrantes desse evento organizado pelo GBank, o Grupo de Extensão e Genética e Melhoramento de Plantas da Exalc. Hi everyone, we are here today with a professor Alexander Litka, who is a professor of biometry at the University of Illinois. Hi professor, it is a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you, Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. And to start our conversation, can you, could you please tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, your path in science, and how you became a professor at the University of Illinois? Sure. So it's actually a more long and complicated story than you might think. So <laughs> um, I started off with my undergrad at the University of Florida as a scholarship piano student. So I would practice the piano for about three hours a day. Um, and then I realized, you know, I was not going to become a rock star my freshman year as an undergrad. <laughs> and so I decided to, um, you know, get a double major in statistics. And thankfully, I liked statistics. Um, and so then I went to graduate school um, at Purdue University. Um, I got my PhD in statistics. But along the way there, um, there I, I learned of this class of introduction of genetics to statisticians and I fell in love with it like I, I love the concept of having your trait as your y variable in a regression model right and then your genotypes as your x variables and I just fell in love with genetics I got a PhD with in statistics with a focus on genetics I did my postdoc in a uh, maze genetics lab um, supervised by Ed Buckler and Mike Gore, and um, I really like crops too. And so I ended up becoming a professor and an associate professor in biometry and um, crop sciences. That's a really interesting and different kind of story. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in your lecture at uh, Arabeta, you focus you focus on integrating more biology, like biological insights uh, yeah. into quantitative genetics. Yeah. Uh, how can this integration enhance the accuracy of prediction in breeding program? Yeah, so it can do it in, in multiple ways. So first I'll begin with the easy part, which is indirectly benefiting breeding. Like, I think if we understand the genetic architecture of traits, then we can have more enhanced, better genomic prediction models that are tailor-fitted to bump up the prediction accuracies even higher. Um, so I think that molecular biology can help us, um, you know, uh, elucidate precisely, um, you know, what are the most important genes. Um, also, another area of research I'm really interested in is testing out the omnigenic model, um, as I said in the talk yesterday. And I think that molecular biology can help us find those core genes. Um, and then ultimately, with all of that knowledge, you know, with the underlying genetic architecture, we can then come up with better training populations. Um, and that's a different part of the um, you know, equation, if you will, of genomic prediction is you, you can have a good model, but if you don't have good training data, you cannot get good prediction accuracy. So mm -hmm. um, I guess not really in a nutshell, because that was a very long answer, but, <laughs> but, but that's how I think molecular biology can help us uh, improve um, breeding and prediction accuracy. Nice. So, talking about molecular biology, uh, are there specific areas in the field of molecular biology yeah. that you see as fundamental for improving uh, quantitative genetics? Yeah. So, first of all, I will answer this with saying I am absolutely not an expert in molecular <laughs> biology. Um, but, I don't know, I think CRISPR, maybe, if, if, if that can, I don't know, use to help us find those core genes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think that, and 
I don't know, also just really well thought out experimental studies where yeah. we can, you know, look at knockout mutations and, you know, um, and, and I'm not sure if this is really in the realm of molecular biology, but like um, in that genetics paper I was telling you about in the talk yesterday, virtually new at all, uh, 2024 or 2025, whenever it gets published, um, maybe coming up with like networks, um, you know, for example, to help quantify transcription effects, like, you know, you know, trans regulation mm -hmm. of genes, um, any kinds of molecular biology that can help us out with that. Nice, nice. So, um, what type of biological data you could do? Does you consider most most promising for improving the accuracy of genomic prediction in crops? Yeah. Well, I think genotypic data um, is going to be the most important because sure. you need genotypic data to, to do genomic prediction. But I think also those other omic levels um, can be helpful because, you know, genetic architecture is just not additive effects one genetic time. You know, uh -huh. the genes interact. And I think that um, transcription factors, for example, the transcriptome can help us indirectly identify, like, Epistatic signals and uh, things like that. Sure, sure, nice. So, uh, for you, what are the main challenges for implementing new, te new, new breeding technologies in, tra in traditional breeding programs like mm -hmm. the new CRISPR technology? Or yeah, I so I'm definitely not a breeder. I'm just <laughs> a huge fan of breeders. Um, but I think I think it's going to be costs, right? Like. Um, sure. These things seem to be pretty expensive. Yeah. So and um, so that's one challenge. And then another challenge is um, broader applicability to um, you know the the breeding audience, like being being able to operate things without having to have a master's degree in computer science, um, you know, and you know be, be, being able to run statistical models and have a reasonable interpretation of results before talking with a statistician or a quantitative genetic. I, I think, yeah, I think cost and um, making these approaches accessible to a broader reading audience. Nice. So, uh, you know, talk yesterday, you talked about uh, one work that you're working on right now that has some interdisciplinarity in here, mm -hmm. in his, in your work. So, yeah. how is important uh, this interdisciplinarity for research in quantitative genetics? I think it is absolutely essential. Like, for example, I am I am a statistician, right? Um, and I learned about quantitative genetics. Um, I don't have as good a much of a knowledge as I want to of like the other side of genetics, which is functional genetics and molecular genetics. And mm -hmm. I think that we need um, a well-rounded, all eyes on deck view of how to solve the problems that we face in, in, in the future. So, um, and then also, you know, I cannot write fast, efficient code. So I really need the help of a computer scientist to, um, you know, um, code it up so it's parallelizable. Um, you know, such, such as the work that uh, Dr. Joao Viana and his colleagues are doing with my omnigenetic stuff. So, um, interdisciplinary work is essential. Nice, nice. So, once again, Professor, thank you so much for your time. Uh, that was a great interview for us. So, this was, this was the interview with Professor Alexander Litka from the University of Illinois. Don't forget to like and subscribe our, in our YouTube channel. And thank you so much, Mr. Professor. Thank you. It is my pleasure. <laughs>